So you may notice that I'm once again fully suited and veiled up because today I'm going to be doing a full inspection all the way down. I don't want to take my chances with uh, being in shorts and a t-shirt. Um, today I'm also going to be looking at the size of the cells. Now I use natural comb and let them build their own comb. I don't use any foundation and foundation is normally sold where the cell size is 5.4 millimeters uh, unless you get small cell where it's I, if I remember correctly it's about 4.9 millimeters but there's some discussion about what is natural cell size. Um, I don't know this hive Queen Anne she was uh, a package that I purchased in April. Um, I don't know what size cells they were using at the um, bee farm that she came from. So I don't know what to expect. I, I, I would imagine that they were using large cell, which is the standard. Um, and so the cell size that we find in Queen Anne, I'm in, you know, going to be guessing that they're going to be close to the 5.4 millimeters. Um, Queen Beatrice over there, though, she was a swarm. But I don't know if she was feral or if uh, it was a swarm that was cast off by someone who uses foundation. So I'm going to be measuring those cells as well. So that's, that's one of the observations I'm going to be trying to make today, as well as seeing if Husserl positioning is natural phenomenon that I can observe in my hives. And if you're not familiar with Husserl positioning, I'll provide a link to Wikipedia in the description that explains what it is. Um, I don't know if I'll even be able to observe it depending on whether I can see the bottoms of the combs uh, of the cells. Uh, also, this time of year, most beekeepers will be doing treatment for mites, but I don't do any treatment. I'm trying to practice treatment-free beekeeping, which means I'm not even going to dust with powdered sugar, which is another type of treatment. I'm not doing any treatment. So, and the reason I don't do treatments is because I believe that treating for mites weakens the bees' natural ability to be able to get rid of the mites themselves. It also selects for stronger mites. Uh, even powder shake, you know, shaking powder sugar onto the bees doesn't knock off all the mites and those mites that cling on are then strong enough to breed more mites that are also strong enough to hold on. So my, my idea of um, doing completely treatment free beekeeping is in an effort to encourage stronger bees and weaker mites. This is where treatment-free natural beekeeping becomes easier because I don't have to worry about when it's time to treat, I don't have to pay for expensive treatments and medicines, and I don't have to worry about contaminating the honey in the hive or the wax as well. So that's, that's the basis of my hypothesis of uh, treatment-free natural beekeeping being easier. So let's get on with the inspection. Very true. This has 32 points. Now this frame is not Hoosel positioning. The Y's are going the wrong, wrong way. Is that one of the uh, um, foundation? No. It's not even near the foundation. Uh, it's two frames away from the one with foundation. I'm going to try to get a measurement here. Do that. That's what I've seen over here when I'm trying to get some of honey. Some of the honey fiber, but... On this surface, honey. Let's see how well I can do a measurement. Is there one so on there? Get, yeah. Measuring 5.4 millimeters each. Right 
still. Hiding. All right, mom. Didn't that honey taste like it was flavored? Frame number four. Let's see if it's doing oozel positioning here. Nope. Yes, yes, it is actually. Sorry, got that wrong. Well, <laughs> not the entire frame. It shifts from one one end to the other. Some in on one end, the Y's are going up, and on the other end, they're going down. So it, it can vary just in one frame. Probably because it's drone comb on, on the sides here. No, it's all worker comb. So much for that. The theory. drone comb is on the other side of that box. Frosted. What? We're mid clusters today. No. Well, the drone comb is on the other side of that box. Yeah. Take some measurements here. Alright, so the hive inspection is complete. Uh, down in the brood, two brood chambers, uh, we had some, still some good uh, brood patterns. I didn't see any eggs in the bottom chamber, although I saw a lot of empty cells. But I did see some eggs up in the second box. Um, I did not observe any uh, solid hoosel positioning pattern. In fact, I saw in one frame it went from Y's being upside down to Y's being right side up on the one face, just on one side, and it was all worker comb. So it wasn't like brood comb in the middle throwing things off, or uh, it wasn't drone comb in the middle throwing things off. It was all worker. So, you know, is Hoosel positioning a valid theory? I don't know. I can't say just from inspecting one hive, but I did not observe it from in this hive where they drew, the, the, uh, drew down their own comb. I didn't provide any foundation, so. I would consider this to be a natural state. So the third box weighs about 50, it weighs about 62 pounds, but there's bees, wax, and 11 pounds of box here, so it's about 50 pounds of honey. And the fourth box here was weighing 42 pounds, so it weighs, uh, you know, 11 pounds of box plus bees and wax. There's maybe about 30 pounds of honey here. Okay, now I'm gonna do a full inspection on Queen Beatrice. I haven't gone down and inspected the lower box since I've put on this super here. So this will be, uh, it's been a few weeks since I've um, inspected them all the way down. I see eggs and larvae. 
worker brood, a little bit of bee bread and honey. This is looking good. I'm going to take some measurements on this frame. So I've got my metric measurements on this ruler here. I need to find a, a place where the there's a line of cells that are pretty much straight. And you can see that they don't all, they're not all straight. They kind of curve and wave. Left and it's straight. Bottom left. Yeah, uh, I know. Over here. It's not horizontal, but it's straight. I want to get in the brood area though. Because that's the size of cell I'm most interested in. But they're kind of, it's kind of not uniform. So maybe this isn't a good frame to do this on. There's some, looks like drone brood over here, but it's not the right size cell. But it's bulbous capping. Same thing over here. Well, actually, they're making pretty small drones. Look at that one right there. Yeah. Well, I can clear these bees off out of the way. I think I can get a nice straight shot here. So what I'm doing is I'm picking... 10 cells and measuring across 10 of them uh, starting from the 10 centimeter line and measuring out and I can just divide by 10 and that's that's the cell dimension so let's see this is gonna be a little rough because that's kind of a wavy line but I see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten out to five point out to you know fifteen point I'm sorry, that's a 15.4, so that's a 5.4 millimeters per cell. So I suspect, I'm going to do some more measurements in other frames, because it may just be this frame, the wobbliness is throwing off the measurement. Okay. Here's a frame that doesn't have any capped brood. It's all open brood. I'm going to bring it back over. Okay. So this is measuring uh, 5.3 millimeters. So it's a little bit smaller, but not much. I guess the question is, why do I care? Why, why am I interested in the cell size? And it's to do with the uh, uh, treatment-free beekeeping. The idea is bees that draw their own comb will draw a smaller size cell, which reduces their incubation period and uh, less time for the mites to really start to grow. The shorter time period the bee is developing, the, short, the fewer mites can grow in there with it. It's part of a natural way of, of reducing the mite population. So bees that grow in small cells have fewer mites is the idea. Also smaller bees are more efficient. You can have more, you can have a higher bee population with the same amount of comb surface area. This one here, on this frame, this is the uh, sixth frame. The cell sizes are measuring uh, five point one five point two millimeters. I want to measure this one. I want to try to listen to the last one. I didn't see it. Not a whole lot. Because I was watching. I was thinking. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Measuring 5.2 millimeters. This is a new frame. I mean, a frame with new comb in it. 
So these bees are regressing nicely. 5.2 millimeters. So I wonder if they possible that they're a second generation swarm. Fair. There's the queen. There's Queen Beatrice. If you're that close, you may not focus. I can see her. Okay. It, but is it focused? Yes. Okay. Uh, There's Queen Beatrice right there. I can't handle it. Where'd you go? Right here. Yeah, there she is. And this is all honey here with some cat brood. So a brand new comb. A little worker comb. Whoa. What? I tipped. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. This one's measuring five point three millimeters. So Queen Beatrice looks good. In fact, we actually got to see her. Uh, the cell sizes in, in uh, Queen Beatrice hive were a little bit smaller than Queen Anne's where I was seeing some that were 5.2 and some were 5.4. So it was a little bit of a mix. Um, the brood pattern looks good. They've been storing some honey. I think uh, I didn't observe any hoosel positioning in here either. Uh, it was kind of a mix even on one frame. You can see why it's going in both directions. So uh, still not sold. Um, anyway, she's good. <laughs>